Hi everybody. Today I am going to discuss about biaxial bending and as well biaxial interaction surface. So first I am talking about uniaxial bending. The analysis and design of columns under eccentric loading considering a uniaxial case means that the load Pn was acting along y-axis causing a combination of axial load and a moment about x-axis equal to mnx equal to pn i mean this pn into ey in equation we can write like this these two axial load pn and moment about x axis it is pn into ey this pn and ey for the second case we are taking section like this and acting along this pn acting along the x axis we can see it here with an eccentricity ex causing a combination of an axial load pn and a moment mny equal to pn into ex this pn into ex in case of uniaxial bending so it is easy to calculate but if it is biaxial bending it is not that easy so let's move in the next slide to see that Here, the load Pn is acting, say, outside of this section at a distance from the x-axis, it is Ey, this is Pn, so it is at a distance Ey and from y-axis at a distance Ex then the column section will be subjected to a combination of forces so what are those these three this is the load about x axis mnx equal to pn into ey again moment about y axis mny equal to pn into ex And many columns are subjected to biaxial bending. And this type of column we find in the corner of a building. I mean for the corner columns. And in comparison to bending about one axis, as we have seen in previous slide of a reinforcement concrete column, Biaxial bending presents an entirely different and more complicated situations. Because once we introduce a second bending moment, the neutral axis are no longer parallel to the centroidal axis of the section, but it lies at some angle theta from them. And due to the rectangular shape of the cross section, if theta increases, then the area of the cross section, say under compression, becomes triangular. Let's bring that over this. First, we are writing here this moment what we have 
seen here as well this one now for this part I put color to see compression and if we increase this angle and this triangle I mean this part will become a triangular and the neutral axis as we have seen or we have found that it is at an angle with respect to both axes so it needs lengthy calculations because these lengthy calculations are needed to determine the location of the neutral axis strains concrete compression area and internal forces and their points of applications so a lot of complicacy are there so in the next slides we will see how to create a biaxial interaction i mean curve to understand more deeply about biaxial bending so let's move ahead in the next slide to see about biaxial interaction curve So biaxial bending strength of an axially loaded column as we have seen here it is represented by a three dimensional interaction curve and surface surface is formed by series of inaxial interaction curves drawn radially from the p and axis that's what i have written here this is the pn axis series of inaxial interactions curve here we have how many this one that is one two this is three and this direction it is three four we can take hundreds of but here i have taken only four now the curve mox represents the interaction curve in inaxial bending about the x-axis and the curve MOY represents the curve in inaxial bending about y-axis and also this plane at constant Pn So this plane at constant axial load Pn, it represents the bending moment Mn about any axis, about any axis, Mn about any axis. Now the surface, it is formed by Already we know inaxial curves drawn radially from the PN axis. So it's very clear we have to draw all those interaction curves radially from the vertical axis. I mean this one. But If interaction, I mean intermediate interaction diagram, we have to draw like this one. Already these two I have told, already I have explained, but for this one, I mean this way, having angle theta. What it says, inter intermediate interaction diagram between the angle theta, theta is what? from 0 to 90 from 0 degree uniaxial bending about y-axis this one and 90 degree uniaxial bending about x-axis are obtained by varying the angle of neutral axis for assumed strain configurations 
So changing this angle, we can find the inaxial interaction curves, intermediate interaction diagrams. Normally, in general, a biaxial, I mean, strength interaction curve, it is obtained by performing a series of strain compatibility analysis, and it is time consuming. So, and it is a lengthy process. That is why we need to use computer program for this. Now, say for this one, interaction scar for this one, say MOX, then MOY, and another one throw this MN. In the next slide, we'll see this diagram, how to present it more distinctly. So we move in the next slides. This is the normal procedure how we can get uniaxial interaction curves, but this is the part I am showing it first. The curve MOX represents the interaction curve in uniaxial bending about X axis. How it looks? So it's now very clear. This is the one. So it is curve MOX interaction curves about x axis so let's move in the next slide to see the other one the curve moy represents the interaction curve in uniaxial bending about the y axis i mean here Let's see that. See, it looks very clear. Now it is very clear what we need to draw, what the curve is. Now we'll see intermediate one. Let's move in the next slide. So intermediate interaction diagram between the angle equal to 0 and 90, but I am taking here at angle theta. So how it looks? Look at. Even I can take in this direction also, but I put this one at an angle theta. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.